Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with mysticgenmara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And today, tonight, whenever you see this, I would like to offer your monthly and elemental energy reading for October of 2024. And we are going with the earth element here. It is for Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. If you're curious as to why I read for the elements instead of the zodiac, there's a link, a video link in the description. You can check that out. Also, if you've never had your charts done, there is a natal chart linked in the description. It's not a sponsored link or anything. It's just a really cool product. They give you your birth chart with the 12 houses and all the planets and everything. And then there's a 10 to 20 page uh, outline for it that fills in all the blanks. It is an amazing resource. <laughs> I literally have mine right by my desk pretty much all the time anymore. So <laughs> if you're interested, you can check that out. Also, any of the cards, books, or decks I'm using are linked in the description as well. So with that, we'll get started with our I Ching. And I cast the hexagram before the reading. Uh, and I read intuitively, but we'll go through the book and then see what source has to add as well. So Earth, you got number six, and it is the conflict hexagram. So this could be a little interesting. Gotta move my mic. So, conflict, confidence accompanied by obstacles with care affairs can be made to prosper in the middle course, but the final outcome will be disaster. It is advantageous to visit a great man, but not to cross the great river or sea. Seeking advice from a single person that you respect is part of that great man part, but do not cross the great river or sea. October is not going to be Earth's month. It's not going to be a month to do grand sweeping things. It doesn't mean that you won't make progress. It just means that those gigantic projects that you were hammering on for the last few months and doing really well, it's time to maybe slow down a little bit is what I'm hearing. So we'll, t we'll actually get a little more definition here. Our foundational line, our baseline here, provided that affairs are not pressed through to the end and that as little as possible is said about them, they will end propitiously. Head down, mouth shut, just do the work. This is not a month to be talking or bringing in new people. What I'm hearing right off the bat with this one is this month is a time to do the quiet work. The stuff that you're able to do, you're not going to overdo it, you're not pushing too hard, but you're, you are the one taking care of it, Earth. You've got the tools, the skills. Um, I'm hearing the Magician card is kind of your theme for this month, and I haven't even pulled any cards yet. So that's the kind of energy. You have the knowledge, the abilities, and the skills to do stuff, but it's really saying use one of the uh, tools of the Wiccan, and that is to be silent. So this is a time, or of magic, I should say. So this is not a time to be talking about what you're working on. You may have done that in the past, and that's great, but this month it's time to maybe quiet down just a little bit. So your second line, as the conflict cannot be resolved, he beats a hasty retreat. His clan, numbering 300 households, also escapes harm. This is really saying, do not get involved in other people's drama as well. Um, his clan, numbering 300 households, that could be your circle of friends. If you start seeing drama going on, just pull away. It's not worth it this month. It's What I'm hearing is if you get involved in it this month, it's going to actually get a lot bigger or a lot worse over time. So it's best just to see drama and walk away from drama. So our third place line, he nourishes himself upon the ancient virtues. Right determination leads to initial trouble followed by good fortune. Were he to speak publicly, or sorry, were he to seek public office now, he would not be able to attain it. This is again that you're doing the things that are quiet. It's that uh, the ancient virtues to know, to will, to be silent, and to, or to do to, and be silent. I can't remember the order, but you're you're being called to the be silent part. This is not a time to be vocal about the things that you're working on, whether it's spiritually or projects, big projects you're doing. Do the work, head down, mouth shut type thing. Uh, and it doesn't when it says were he to seek public office, he would not be able to attain it. This is not the time to step out and make yourself the center. This is the time to do the background work. It's not saying that it won't happen, but just don't seek it out. So our fourth place line right here, since the conflict cannot be resolved, it is best to retreat and submit to heaven's will. Peaceful determination brings good fortune. 
God Source Divine, however you want to see that, is the one that is kind of pulling the strings. It's not to say that you don't have a control over what's going on or you don't have a say in it. The thing is, is you have already put those intentions forward. You have already set the plan in motion. Basically, fate, karma, whatever you want to call it, has taken the wheel and is going. Anything that you're doing outside of the path ahead of you that is being cleared is going to be a little bit rough. So just let things kind of play out as you've established them is what I'm hearing here. So, and that's where that peaceful determination. Just keep doing the path that you're on. Don't worry about what else is going around. And our fifth place line, conflict followed by supreme good fortune. Again, things might be a little bit of rough. And what I'm hearing is the first part of this month, the first three weeks or so, are going to be a little bit on the interesting side. We'll just call it interesting. Because the end of the month, we're heading into a more positive state. The momentum you've built up over the summer, because Earth, you've been doing some good work. Now it's time to just kind of ride that wave, but do so quietly. And if anything does come up, pull yourself away from it. It's not worth getting into it. Um, whether that is uh, arguing about a spiritual project you're going with because some member of your family doesn't agree with you, or it's a work-related thing where you have this great idea, which is going to work amazing, and someone else feels that that's not a good idea and they're making themselves really vocal, let them. Because what's going to happen is you can put yourself, put your plan, your goal, your dream, ambition into play quietly, and when it works out, the egg's on their face, not on yours. So our capstone... If a girdle of honor were bestowed upon him, he would be forced to strip it off thrice within one day. Again, Earth, this month, it is going to be about quietness. It is about doing the work without talking about it. And there may be points where you feel, well, I, I need to. God Source Divine, through the I Ching here, has said, this isn't the month for that. Do the work. Be quiet. It's not worth talking about. That is a, what the axiom of to be silent is your theme. You also have the image of the magician on the tarot card. You have all four tools that you need. You are in a balanced state within. Don't allow the conflict and nonsense outside to be a distraction or a frustration for you. Stay focused. Go with the flow because, like I said, following heaven's will, you've already set this thing up let it play out the way it's supposed to and work it towards the end of the month things are going to things will get better by the end of the month you're going you have a silver lining here but right now head down mouth shut just keep going with what is already at play so no new stuff <laughs> um, i read week to week with the tarot which is what we're about to hop into and there are approximately 5 weeks in october and so we'll do all five. Uh, I read a guide or guardian, which is something to guide you through that week. A guardian to help you deal with any energy that may be unexpected or uncomfortable. A uh, message from source, which is a, a for affirmation, positive, uplifting, or some kind of reassurance that source is actually listening and paying attention. Maybe a little bit of guidance comes through there as well. And then we look at a lesson or a challenge from the tarot, which is a lesson to work on or a challenge that you may not have expected but pops up that week. Um, and feel free if the week's rearranged and they don't line up the way that, that you feel they will, then take them in, take them as they come for you. With that, if I can even talk today, we'll get started with your first guide or guardian, which is the Archangel Metatron and Clear Quartz. This is kind of powerful considering what the I Ching just said. The, the meaning of the card is actually power. I embrace the opportunity to explore a healthy relationship to personal power. This supports my spiritual journey to fulfill my destiny for the benefit of all beings. I choose to express my power in a way that is respectful, merciful, and kind towards myself and others. I utilize my growing power to awaken my boldness and confidence. I recognize the inevitability of my divine fulfillment. This is that inner work. This is that inner connection to God, Source Divine. And it you notice through that entire card talking about spiritual power and possibly even physical power, there's no reference to being loud. It's really saying you're doing the inner work, and as you do the work, it benefits other people. But it doesn't say you're out there talking about it and pushing it so 
And when you have Metatron coming up, this is really a time for doing the inner work and working with ascension type energy where you see this divine being coming forward to help guide you and protect you because uh, the lore with Metatron was he was human at one point and ascended into the divine realm. Therefore, he has the ability to guide and encourage us to help gain that knowledge as well. So for this first week of October, it is starting off with kind of a bang. The world around is doing its thing. This is where you are. This field within you is where your attention needs to be. Whatever's happening on the outside will be reflected because of what you're doing inter internally. So first week is working with those power energies of Metatron and Clear Quartz so that way you can have the strength to make it through the months, <laughs> which you already do, just a little extra boost. Your message from source is follow the stream, dedication, trust, future rivers and oceans. I'm hearing that this is most definitely a call to go with the flow, don't fight about stuff, don't stress about things. Earth, allow that inner aspect of water, because you are tied to water in a way, to guide you. Go with the flow. It's surrendering yourself to the divine will. You've already set things in motion. Let them play out in the manner in which they were designed. And that's what uh, Source is saying. So let's take a peek at your tarot message for this first week. What do we have? We have the Queen of Air. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, independent, experienced, realistic, and witty. Objective decision-making, clearing away the, all that does not serve, seeing humor in a situation. There's some feminine energy, and it's going to be in a form of an advisor or a no someone who's knowledgeable, but I'm getting a lot of feminine energy. It could be an actual female. It could be someone who carries a lot of feminine energy. And with that, you're tying it to air. So this week, you're trying to go with the flow, and you may be getting some pushback. And that's a little bit of the challenge energy I'm coming from this independent type um, female that's been there, done that. She knows, and what you're doing is not right. But what you're doing is what your intuition and guidance are calling you to do. So she can be logical and powerful in her own right. She has every right to be that way. But you also have every right to follow your inner guidance and go along with the flow. So this could be a little bit of your conflict energy that's coming up in the I Ching is this queen of air energy. So if there is, again, that dominant uh, female, very intellectual type energy coming up, allow it to exist. It's not worth fighting about. Again, hear them out. They might have some good ideas and good points to implement later. But at this particular moment in time, they can talk and you can listen and that's that's enough so let's take a peek at your second week's guide or guardian we have the angel of bath coal and aquamarine is your stone and your authentic voice so we have my authentic voice awakens truth clarity and courage within myself and others my voice supports the opening of my soul's path i trust the inner truth expressed with love that brings spiritual benefits to all beings the authentic message from my soul shared with generosity and grace are recognized and received with and by others my soul wisdom knows how to express what needs to be shared effectively and for the highest good of all i accept and express the uniqueness of my authentic voice and tune into what resonates deeply for me i choose to live the truth of my soul so the first week was just a reminder you're going with the flow you're tapping into that spiritual energy and you're working in inner work the second week is when others are going to notice good bad or indifferent others are going to start to notice or they already have been noticing and they may actually come talk to you about it that's fine you have every reason to have that discussion you have every reason to entertain that to a certain extent if it becomes too aggressive or too hostile, walk away. Bath coal and aquamarine are very high energy, high frequency spiritual um, and uh, stones and beings. So you really want to pay attention that if you feel that drag, like something's trying to pull you down, just look at the I Ching. 
When the chaos ensues, you walk away. You escape with your 300 and you have no harm. It is not a shame to walk away from hostility or negativity that's being directed at you. Now, there's times when you have to learn from that, but when you're in the moment and the uh, emotions are going high, it's not worth the fight. And that's the important part to remember, Earth. Your message from Source are birth mysteries. What are you being called to create? This is tying back into that everything that is going on, everything that you have started, everything that you have planted, seeds, so to speak. This month is when stuff really gets to moving. Step back, allow the will of heaven to manifest because you've planted your seeds, allow the rain to fall. If you're trying to rein it in and you're trying to control it, there's going to be some conflict. Sources saying, you have set up some amazing creations, Earth. You have set some beautiful intentions. Are you willing to let them manifest? You've done the preliminary. Are you willing to uh, surrender to the will of heaven and let them come to fruition? That is really what you're being called to do the second week of October is to double check. Are you ready? The things are in things are starting to move for you. Like I said, good, bad, indifferent, things are starting to move. And are you ready for the changes? It's not always easy. Earth tends to want to stay nice and structured. Things need to be safe, secured, planned out. But sometimes you have to set those intentions and let the will of heaven do its thing because you may not have seen the best possible outcome, but you've set this great intention. So the path might end up doing this instead of just a straight shot to the top. So are you ready for those intentions and those things to manifest for you? That's the message for the second week. Your second week's um, lesson or challenge from the tarot is number 18, the moon with Archangel Haniel. Important psychic insights, events behind the scenes, release fears that hold you back. The moon is saying, and this is not a super strong point for Earth. It's, it's there. It's just not your strongest point. Work with your feminine energy to a certain extent because you also have to be aware that your challenge is the queen of air so you want to be careful with how you work with your feminine energy here but it's also saying to tap into the moon energy moon feminine is more working with your divine spiritual water feminine energy and that's really about getting into the flow of your intuition as you go through this week the second week you're living more truthful and others are noticing it, it may not be for the best on coming from them but you're living your best life and you're starting to accept that things are coming in and at right now it's best just to let it happen and the moon is coming in as a little reminder a little lesson tap into your intuition see where you're at what is it you're you need to understand or what is it that you need to let go of this week I'm hearing a lot about bringing in and allowing things to come to you but also you may have to make some space so something might have to move so that you can let those intentions manifest into your life. So, whoa, let's take a peek at our third week as the deck tries to attack me. Um, there we go. No, there we don't go. Okay, <laughs> this deck is being really interesting today. Um, the readings that I've done with it, it's kind of like wants to fall all over the place. We have the goddess Lakshmi and Dendritic Agate. This is going to be an interesting week for our Earth family. It's her golden grace. Enlightenment, prosperity, goodness, and grace flow through and around me. It is as though my soul dances in soft, golden, honey-like energy, abundant with nourishment and healing properties. Through her gentleness, the goddess Lakshmi offers my soul an irresistible invitation to receive her blessing and emulate the beauty of the divine. There is a gentle way through which I make even greater spiritual progress. I joyfully and peacefully accept the path and allow my heart to let go. So this third week is, again, calling that it's not worth pushing. It's not worth struggling. It's not worth trying to take the reins. In this particular aspect, you have this gentle divine feminine but it's tying into that lunar energy, that uh, softer water divine feminine. And that's when you come, come across the goddess Lakshmi and dendritic ag agate. Dendritic basically 
generally speaking, means tree-like. So when you look at the picture here, this is a dendritic agate. And so you can see the little black lines. So it looks kind of like trees. I have some um, dendritic opal, and it looks like common opal. It's not flashy or shiny, but it's got these beautiful black tree-like lines through it. And whenever you hold these, they actually help encourage healing in a physical and spiritual aspect. So this third week is quieting and allowing your body to incorporate the lessons that you have been working on. You've done really well uh, going back. You can check your past couple of months readings and see where you what's been going on and see how it matches with your journals because you might be surprised just how much you've actually changed and grown just in the last three months. But this third week is saying this is a really good time to integrate those things. Being open to receiving those gifts, those um, seeds that you have planted Saying that you're ready is great. Are you willing to receive it now? And that's what's coming forward in this third week is helping you bring in those blessings and helping you make the space for things that might need a little bit more wiggle room to settle in. So let's see what our th message from source is. If my deck, this deck has been a little quiet. The other one's been super active. Um, we have Bounteous generously given relationships and coming together so when you look in this card the vibration that i get off of it is this is a time to allow prosperity this is a coming together a joining of hands of hearts um, if you're in a relationship this third week really spend some time with your partner one-on-one -on -one. and if you've got children have that as a different night but they're saying come together and bring that joy to back into your relationships you can bring do for like a friends gaming night a kids night a couples date night if you're single go out with your friends find ways to reconnect with your family with those around you when you're doing the inner work it can be very lonely when you work with goddess lakshmi she helps you understand and heal things that need to be sorted part of that healing is that bounteous energy of when you start to reach out and you start to actually reconnect with people, you're going to realize just exactly how broad of a friend group you have. Even when you want to be an isolationist like some of us here, um, <laughs> you'll realize just how many people actually do care and how many people actually want to be around you and support you. It doesn't mean to share what's going on in your life. That's not what we're talking about. But reconnecting, as I said, when you look at this card, there is a vibrational type energy. As these two come together, and this third, the spirit is joining in. Do you see the vibrations that are coming off of them? It's this beautiful energy of connection, of healing, of grounding, but it's also a bonding experience. So really bring in that kind of energy in this third week. Well, not really bring in, allow it to come in because it's already going to be available. It's just a matter of accepting it. Um, so let's see what your third week's lesson or challenge is. We have the king of earth, generous, professional, responsible, practical, successful times, confidently accepting opportunities, the Midas touch. Things are going well, but that again, we're keeping it to ourselves. We're being quiet about it. If others notice, that's great, but it's not being communicated from you. And they're saying that this is going to be a little bit of a challenge this week, especially because you're doing that inner work, you're reconnecting and you're bonding with people. And it makes you want to be like, you'll never guess, blah, all of it comes out. <laughs> the king of earth is being like, careful, you don't want to go that route just yet. Everything is going well, you're having a lot of success, but it's mostly going to look small to other people. For you, it's going to be gigantic, it's big stuff happening. But to someone else, they might see it as minuscule, and you don't need that right now because you're in that interesting point where manifestation is happening. So you have to be open to that receiving it in its full size. And if someone else downplays it, our brains have this bad habit of shrinking down our <laughs> big deals into small things, and that doesn't play out so well this month. So avoiding those conflicts is really about keeping the things that are happening with that nice subtle cute little smile of you're right it has been a weird month and in your head you're going you have no idea how cool it's been for me really so your fourth week's guide or guardian is the ascended master hilarion and green uh oh 
Chrysoprase. Some of these crystal names I'm not quite familiar with. And it is the Discernment card. I rely upon my inner knowing to perceive the truth beyond appearances. I feel deep within for the truth of divine love within me guiding me in every moment. I am inspired by grace and with perfect timing I attain the clarity that I need to move forward. I feel joy and support as I trust my emerging insights to safely navigate my way to higher ground. My inner eyes see the truth which faithfully and playfully guides me guides my path. I recognize that I am nourished by the supreme vibration of truth. With this one, what I'm getting is this th fourth week, you're starting to understand why you needed to not talk about things this month. And if you did happen to, this is the week where you're going to notice a little bit of conflict resolution, like things are going to settle down is what I'm hearing. But the discernment is, notice when you've tapped into your inner wisdom, when you tapped into your subconscious mind, that intuitive guidance, your spirits work, um, guides, your angels, things went a lot easier. It's that surrendering to the will of heaven energy where, okay, I know what I've done. I know what I've built. This is the coolest intention ever. These are the affirmations I'm using. Here you go. But no, I want to hold on to it. And when you say, here you go, I'm just going to let it go. I'm just going to let it go. Now you're starting to see, I let it go. And as a lot of people in the Christian community say, let go, let God, you're letting it go, and God's source divine is saying, okay, you gave me your intention, now let me return it in as a manifested item. And that's the kind of, you're starting to see that this week with that discernment. You're also realizing that there might be a person or two that were giving you really what sounded like bad advice, turned out to be kind of good, but that was that queen of air the first week, you know, she might be saying some smart stuff, do not respond to it in that week. This is the week you can start to look at it and you can start to take it out and be like, okay, so what were they really saying? Because now you're in a better headspace and you're seeing things a little bit more clearly. So your message from source is thank you, gratitude, appreciating that which sustains. When you learn discernment, you also understand the things that are the most important to you. You're discerning right from wrong, good from bad. And what I'm hearing with this one is as you tap into that discerning energy, sorry, I'm closing my eyes because I can hear or intuit better. Uh, when you tap into that discerning energy, that you see the gratitude, you see the beauty of what's there. And when you start to experience what those little beautiful pops of life are, you can start to really get into that gratitude state. When even the smallest manifestation occurs, show gratitude show gratitude to the point where the universe is like you liked it that much here's some more <laughs> and that's where we're headed with this manifestation energy coming up this month is there's a little bit of a hiccup in the the whole plot line but a lot of it is saying are you willing to let it go and allow the universe to bring forward the next steps are you allowing the universe to show you what is coming that's what we're getting with this. And as you start to see that, as you start to become more discerning in how you make your next moves, because now you're starting to see the path that's moving it for you, this is where you start saying thank you a lot. And instead of saying things like, and I <laughs> I have a problem with this one personally, um, just because I say it all the time, instead of saying things like I'm sorry, say thank you for understanding. Thank you for whatever it is. And as you start to change the I'm sorry, which is kind of a flinch back, like, ouch, sorry, I didn't mean to do that, you're changing into thank you, meaning you appreciate the fact that, that person is willing to wait on you, to talk to you, to understand where you're coming from, and that changes the dynamic. When you open yourself up to gratitude, gratitude is a give and take energy that you start to understand through discernment, and that's what's going forward with this fourth week's energy is understanding what it means to show and experience gratitude and a really fun way to do it is to say thank you for something simple that someone close to you does family member your spouse even your kids they'll do something instead of saying oh that's nice say thank you but say it in a way that is from comes from your heart you'll notice that when they smile or their face they kind of pause like wait what but they always grin and it's one of those things where they might be a little confused for a minute, but 
you're gonna make their day just by saying that and that's gonna help uplift the entire energy of the situation so your lesson or challenge from the tarot is the seven of earth seeds well planted a temporary pause in action unnecessary worry this is saying notice when you did the right things by planting the seeds and allowing them to grow on their own without having to control them things went better when you worry about how the universe is going to bring something to you it slows it down and i like how this tree is happy but scary at the same time because he's noticed that all the little fairies have planted their seeds and they're growing but he's worried that are they growing the right way you planted it what did you plant <laughs> and that's what's going on here is when you let it go notice how better how much better things happened for you so it's just that you know tapping on your shoulder careful what you wish for and when you do when you let it go see what happens because it's usually pretty cool so let's see what your last week of october is earth we have the ascended master yogananda and rhodonite empowered service i step okay we gotta hold that differently there we go <laughs> sorry I step into my rightful spiritual place with dignity, reverence, and grace. My higher purpose is empowered by the divine will. My connection to the light is strong, unwavering, and enduring, so much so that my truth in its power and presence is unconditional. I accept the invitation from the universe to step up to a new level of expression and fulfillment to my higher purpose. I open my heart to the divine harvest of blessings pouring into my soul. I recognize the readiness within myself. This last week, you've done some inner work. You've been kind of focusing more inner world than outer world. You've been following the guidance of your heart and of God. This last week is an understanding week is what I'm hearing. You have that empowered service now that you have really seen how it uh, how things work how when you let an intention release it to the universe and it manifests for you you now see how simple but also how much you have to pay attention to your uh, signs and symbols that it really is you are a living example this month and in this last week of october your example is going to start to really shine and others are going to notice. Again, good, bad, or indifferent, their others are going to notice, but most of what I'm hearing is going to be more positive by the end of the month. Like others are gonna be like, so how did you do that? You made that look so easy. They don't realize how much inner work you were doing, but this is when you can start to really start to talk about it. You're not giving away everything. You're not, ex you know, we're <laughs> vomiting the whole thing out. But this last week is a good time to start. If people ask questions, respond. You can to have more open communication this last week. Not that you were really closed off, but you were not going to tolerate or deal with drama for the most of this month. And that's kind of a reminder. The most of the month of October, you want to stay away from that. In this last week, you're still avoiding it, but you're more willing to communicate about why you're avoiding it. So your message from source is the healing lagoon rejuvenate recovery time to heal it is safe to stop taking care of yourself taking care of your needs taking care of the energy and frequency of your physical form is so important and this month has shown you why it's important because there's going to be negativity in the world that's just <laughs> unfortunately a reality of where we live at the moment but it doesn't mean that it has to drag you down there's times and this month is a prime example when you're doing the inner work and you're just you're you're to be silent you're not talking about it you're not telling other people what you're doing whether it's a physical plan like you're starting a business you're working on a promotion you're working on that next um, presentation for work you're not talking about it you're doing it by yourself and you're doing it to the best of your knowledge, wisdom, and guidance. The tools that you have are available. You're using all of them. But you're not really bringing other people in, mainly because this month is about you doing the work. It's about you stepping up into that position. But you're not doing it out loud. You're doing it quietly. You're doing it peacefully. You are the 
man behind the curtain for Wizard of Oz fans out there. Um, so you're working your your magic, so to speak, uh, in the presence of your angels, your guides, and God's source divine, who in reality are the most important ones to work it. And at, when you're done, you hand it to them to bring into a realization. You're not forcing it. You're just being like, okay, here it is. And they're going to bring it to you in the way that is best for your soul's journey. And that's where the healing lagoon comes in, is understanding there's times when you do have to step up. But then there's other times where you get to just sit back. Doesn't mean you're not working. It means that you're not the one that has to push the ball up the hill. It is strictly saying this month has been the time for you to do this the background work. Other people can be as loud and boisterous as they want out there, but you don't have to be involved in it. So, oh, this is a cool way to end the, your <laughs> reading. Uh, your lesson or challenge from the tarot is number 20 with Renewal and Archangel Jeremiah. Review and evaluate a favorable assessment of facts, time to move in a new direction. As the month comes to a close, you'll be able to really look back and be like, oh, so that happened and that happened, those were cool, this manifested even better, and you know what? I was able to keep my inner peace because I stayed away from that drama. You could see it from a mile away, and you purposely chose to step away from it. That is a feeling of renewal, of refreshment. And as you're coming to bringing October to a close, that renewal, that refreshing energy is going to carry you into November. Who knows what November will bring? But at this point, what I'm seeing is October is all about being more still and more quiet. Towards the end of the month, things are going to start moving a little bit faster and be a bit more open. Um, but it's setting you up for moving into the next month. So it'll be interesting to see what November brings. Uh, with that being said, have an amazing month of October, Earth. Really enjoy Sawain. Remember those who have passed over. Um, light a candle in remembrance, if nothing else. Um, and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and do all that commenting fun stuff. Let me know your thoughts, feelings, and opinions. With that, I will let you guys go. Have a great month of October, all of the Earth family.